In today's video, we're going to answer these questions about Supreme Commander and Forged Alliance, starting with a 30 second summary of the game, followed by a brief history, before delving into the detailed mechanics section by section, contrasting with other games along the way. We'll explore DLCs, mods, and the price so that by the end of this video, you can make an informed decision. If you find the video useful, please leave us a like as an offering to the uh, YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're a first timer to the channel, these are the kind of games you can expect to see more of. We're very active in the comments here, so please feel free to share your opinion. Now here's Supreme Commander in a 30 second nutshell. Described by many as the pinnacle of RTS, Supreme Commander and the standalone expansion Forged Alliance are all about scale. Set in the far future, you teleport onto the map in your gigantic mech, building up an economy and a base to defend it. Using your two resources, mass and energy, you'll construct land, air and naval factories, and many of them, to churn out hundreds of units, eventually upgrading through three tech levels and even a fourth experimental level, so you can watch the love children of Pacific Rim and Independence Day duke it out. Supreme Commander was released early in 2007, with the standalone expansion Forged Alliance releasing later that same year. Supreme Commander 2 followed in 2010, but we're not reviewing that in this video. The reviews were very positive across the board, however many struggled to run it on their system at the time. Indeed, my system could barely run the trailer without overheating. Fast forward 15 years and the game still has a decent following, so now that average systems have caught up with the minimum system requirements, RTS fans are asking themselves, is now the right time to pick up Supreme Commander? If I've not put you off yet, let's delve into the detail of what it's like to actually play the game with a key fundamental, the economy. Although the game only has two resources, mass and energy, Economy building is by no means straightforward for two main reasons. Firstly, the two resources are very interconnected. You use both mass and energy to construct your mass extractors and power generators. But once built, your mass extractors also consume energy as an ongoing running cost. Mass extractors can only be placed on predetermined positions throughout the map, making map control extremely important whereas power generators are comparatively cheap and quick to build with a one-off build cost. Mass is easily the more difficult of the two resources to create. Once you've built your mass extractors, you can create mass fabricators, but these consume an insane amount of energy. The two resources are so reliant on each other that it's easy to stall your economy with high running costs that impede your ability to keep building and dig yourself out of that hole, let alone create units. The second reason is that capacity of both mass and energy needs to be constantly expanded to keep up with the ludicrous amounts of energy and mass required to build your more powerful units. As you tech up, you can create more powerful power generators and upgrade your extractors, but the price of ever more powerful units is such that your economy is always hungry for more. Outbooming your opponent with the inevitable spam of units and missiles that result is key to any victory. Overall, Supreme Commander strikes a balance between the initial simplicity of having just two resources and the complexity of growing them together in balance. It's like a mini 4X game unto itself. Complex enough to keep economy-focused RTS fans happy, Rise of Nations, I'm thinking of you, while not blowing the brains of those who prefer to just get on with the fighting. In Supreme Commander, you will build a heck of a lot of units, but also a ton of buildings. Your armored command unit, known as the ACU, will be your only builder at first, but you'll quickly want to churn out supporting engineers to expand your construction capacity, all while growing your economy, building base defenses, and starting to churn out units. So queuing up a long and tactical build order at the beginning of the game is essential. Construction is a big part of the game, so if you enjoy chasing maximum efficiency, then there are a ton of build orders out there to help you follow particular strategies. Those of you who like to turtle and enjoy building layered defenses have plenty of toys to play with too, as you have walls to build, upgradable anti-land, air and sea defenses, along with power-hungry energy shields to protect your ever-growing base from missiles. 
There are even adjacency bonuses to boost resource production or reduce running costs if you lay out your base in a certain way. But beware that an exploding building can cause a chain reaction to other buildings close by. Basically, Supreme Commander is a base builder's paradise, and we haven't even gotten to the fighting yet. Your ACU is, well, you. It's you on the battlefield, and if it blows up, you've lost the game, depending on the game mode. Your ACU is a powerful builder, but a very powerful fighter too, so it's up to you how best to deploy this powerful asset. You can even upgrade them in three places, one for each arm and one on their back, which can upgrade their defensive, offensive, building or economic capabilities. It costs a lot to do so, but your ACU could become a titan for your economy or the front lines. It could have a tactical shield, a teleporter, or my personal favourite, attaching a missile launcher that can devastate your opponent from halfway across the map. By the time you've upgraded your factories, you can access a decent number of land, air and sea units across the three tech levels. For example, tech 1 gives you a light tank, tech 2 a medium tank, and tech 3 a heavy tank. And you can still build the tech 1 units once your factory is up to tech 3, giving you more options rather than restricting you to only level 3 units. These units are generally the same across the three factions of the vanilla game and the additional faction in Forged Alliance, but although each faction follows a broad template, there are so many units that there are still key differences across the four factions that lead to different playstyles. The Seraphim, for example, will have equivalent units to the other factions, but several can hover across water as their own little unique twist. So there are differences to mix up the gameplay, but it's not like StarCraft where they're totally different. It's more like Company of Heroes 2 in that respect. Then we have the Experimentals, ludicrously powerful but equally expensive endgame units that range from laser shooting walking mechs to a moving factory or a near limitless resource producing building. Many games will end before these behemoths roll off the production line, but when you start deploying these bad boys, you'll feel like a kid on Christmas morning. They embody everything that's fun about RTS games, and as each faction has several to choose from, there's something for everyone. As you have so many units in Supreme Commander, micromanagement is clearly an important feature. You can queue up multiple orders for the same units easily, creating long chains of commands as you set your engineers to work for the next five minutes constructing a bunch of buildings for your base. Zooming out to the tactical map view, where you can still give orders to your units that have turned into a variety of shapes much like in Homeworld or Steel Division 2, is not just useful, it's essential when commanding a full-scale battle, and the ease at which you can give commands along with the smoothness of transition between tactical zoomed out map and zooming right in is so helpful. You can transport units around the map using fast transport ships. At first they're lightly armoured, but the speed at which they can deliver units makes it worth the risk, and units being carried can shoot while being airlifted, so queuing up commands to pick up, drop off and circle back to get the next wave of units is satisfying to pull off and watch. The base game comes with three campaigns, one for each faction, whereas Forged Alliance has one campaign that can be played as any of the factions. The story itself is nothing like as deep as in Homeworld, and the missions rarely stray far from build up your base, go destroy these units, rinse repeat. But the missions are relatively long, with the map expanding as you reach a new stage, much like in Men of War or Gates of Hell Ostfront, so you never really know where that level is going to ask you to go next. Although the campaign is decent, the multiplayer is where Supreme Commander really shines. A match versus the AI can include up to 8 players with a unit cap of 1000. For most of you that end up hooked on the Supreme Commander formula, this will be enough to keep you happy for hours on end. But for those of you looking for a bit more, I found a place called Forged Alliance Forever, which appears to be a fan-made lobby for Forged Alliance. I didn't try it myself, so I can't provide a personal recommendation, but having done some research, it appears to be the place to be for PvP. They've even made their own patches for the game, so if you like PvP, there is an option for you with an active community. You just need to install something outside of the game to be able to take part. 
Mods and Forged Alliance Forever is where things start getting political, which I have zero interest in, but since official support has been withdrawn from the game, the community have taken it upon themselves to maintain and even breathe new life into their beloved game. Whereas Forged Alliance Forever provides a place for PvP multiplayer and their own patches to the game, the Loud project, which is a mod, completely reworks the game to improve the AI, game performance, and make everything even bigger. Rather than PvP, the focus is more versus the AI with the Loud mod and can be accessed through the game itself once installed. There isn't a Steam Workshop for Supreme Commander, but you can install this via ModDB. Overall, if you do get hooked, whether it's Forged Alliance Forever or The Loud Project, there are community projects there that are still receiving tender love and care for you to deepen your Supreme Commander experience if you so wish. Both the first Supreme Commander and Forged Alliance will cost you $13, £9 or €10 Euros each at full price, but during the regular sales you can expect to see an 80% percent discount on both. Bear in mind that you don't need to buy Supreme Commander 1 to play Forged Alliance, and ultimately Forged Alliance is the superior of the two, so if money is a real issue then by all means leave Supreme Commander 1 out of it, but there are some caveats to that. These games are complex and will take you time to learn, let alone master. Forged Alliance makes less effort to teach you how the game works, whereas Supreme Commander 1 will hold your hand. If you want to save some money and jump straight into Forged Alliance, that's fine, but you'll need to put more effort in yourself with YouTube tutorials, etc. Then of course the original comes with its own campaign, so if you like the game it's worth getting both for the additional campaign material. Having played many RTS games over the years, I can say that Supreme Commander has been a joy to learn and get up to a reasonable standard. But it's also easy to appreciate that the game is difficult to master, and therefore how it's managed to keep its fanbase happy for all these years. But is it right for you today? Clearly this is a futuristic game where lasers and big guns are the order of the day, but putting that aside, Supreme Commander otherwise manages to incorporate pretty much everything an RTS gamer enjoys, and in such a way that these elements work well together. You need to build an economy. Doing so has enough complexity and opportunity for min-maxing to keep an economy-based player happy. But if you're not that bothered about economic gameplay, there are only two resources. Just build some mechs and pgens and you can get to the fighting. There are walls and point defence systems for players who enjoy turtling. It won't win you the game, but I've seen plenty of players who enjoy playing against several difficult AIs purely so they can build a base and see how long they can defend it for. For those who like as many units on screen as possible, Supreme Commander will have thousands of units on screen and makes it manageable on your micro with the tactical map and queuing up orders as well as making it manageable on your system, given the game is 15 years old, but it still looks decent for its age. Casual players will find the game easy to pick up, as the basics are easy to understand. There are two resources, you make units from your land, air and naval factories, and there are three tiers of technology, all easy to pick up and start playing, leaving you to concentrate on the trickier elements of the game. On a very basic level, the successful formula of Supreme Commander reminds me of the Company of Heroes 2 multiplayer. They're totally different games, but if you strip them right back to their core, the player is presented with a simple set of basic decisions. Do you build a land, air or naval factory first? Do you unlock a lieutenant or a captain first? And the further down the rabbit hole you go, the more and more options you have, and the more complex the game becomes, but by that point you're hooked and looking up strategies to deploy in your next game. The impressive number of units leads to many different tactics and build orders to dominate your opponent. Controlling and upgrading your ACU gives the game a hero element, and I could go on. But the point is, all of this, and more, is why Supreme Commander is so popular today. If you like RTS in any of its forms, it's worth giving it a try, because you might just find your next addiction. If you've played Supreme Commander for years, what keeps you coming back? 
or if you're considering purchasing the games, have you been convinced? Please leave your opinions and questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you in short order. If you found the video useful or at least interesting, the rest of my content is similar, so please do consider checking that out and supporting my little underdog YouTube channel. All the best and I'll see you in the next one.